Hey, yo everyone, Andrew here, bringing you another video review. Do you know what today is? Today is Wednesday, the best day of the week. You know why? Because it's comic book day, and that means we're going to be talking about my comic load for the week. Uh, now, two things real quick. One is, first and foremost, I'm sorry I didn't get my review up on its normal time, but uh, because of the holidays, comics were pushed back. So I didn't get my comics till later. Um, second of all, it is zero month. We're starting these zero issues. So we're going to be talking about those. And also we have before Watchmen. So might as well just jump right into it, shall we? Yes, I think we shall. Uh, let's start things off where we always start things off every week. With a little bit of Batman in our day. With Detective Comics. Issue zero. And I guess technically they're all going to be issue zeros. So, again... If you don't know anything about Zero Month, basically Zero Month is telling origin stories for the characters of the New 52. And some miscellaneous stories for characters that already have their origins established or their origins they don't want to tamper with. For example, uh, Superman's origin was roughly touched upon in Action Comics, so it's not really going to be too much touched upon in the Zero issue. Batman's origin is not going to mixed around with, so his origin is not really going to be dealt with in the Zero Issue. However, in Detective Comics, we see Batman training. And basically, we get a chance to look at one of the many different masters that Batman went to to learn his various different skills, whether it be meditation, martial arts, control over his body, um, just, you know, the stuff that makes him Batman. And a good majority of this issue is Bruce learning his various different skills, but struggling with the concept of light and dark. Um... The good in his heart and the dark in his heart. And on one end, you know, he's being told you need to have light. You need to be able to shine in this world so that you don't lose connection with people. But at the same time, if you have connection with people, it's bad because those people could betray you. They could die. You could lose them. So it's really kind of a conflict Bruce is having. Now, at the end of the com uh, comic, he kind of comes to terms with what he's going to do. But there's still that conflict that you have to see there. Uh, so we'll get into the good, bad, and whether or not you should get Ugh, get it. Did I say get? Hmm. Uh, good. First and foremost is I love Bruce training stories. Uh, some of my favorite Batman stories from like Legend of the Dark Knights or maybe even Batman Blind Justice. Or even the latter half of Nightfall where he's retraining his body. I love Bruce training. I love the, 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 the effort that's put into making the Batman. Maybe it's because I'm a martial artist and I like karate and I like fighting and I like training and I can have some kind of connection to Batman on that sense. But I just like to see him build himself and all the different things he had to go through to become what he is today. So I really did like that. Um, I also like the dialogue in this. I thought it, with the exception of the art opening first two pages, I thought the dialogue was pretty good. Um, again, captured that light and dark very nicely. And in addition to that, I also thought the art was good. The backup issue in this was fine. It was just basically the return of Bruce to the Wayne family hold. And we kind of see what happens with Alfred in that time when Bruce is gone. So we got a little bit of that also. Bad? Um, no, none. This was a great Zero issue. Um, I really did enjoy this. I really did think it was fun. Uh, Detective Comic is going to get a 5 out of 5. This was really good. Uh, going on to Batwing, issue number 0. Again, a little bit more Batman in our life. So we get to see how David becomes Batwing. And that's basically the gist of this. We see how he's troubled when he's younger, the people he's connected to, and what builds him to be Batwing. Because it's not only Batman giving him the technology and giving him the training, but it is various different other people in his life. Some people that get hurt, some people that he loves, some people that die. There's going to be some tragedy and there's going to be some triumph in this issue. But we really do see what makes Batwing Batwing. Good. Um... I think out of all the zero issues here, I think this had to have been the best origin story because it did it told us stuff that we kind of knew, but it didn't tell us anything we didn't already know, if that makes any sense. It told us stuff that we can assume. It clarified things. It gave us a defined origin for Batwing. Um, but it didn't tell us anything unnecessary that we didn't already know. The art was good in this, and I really did like how Batwing is 
his origin and his troubled past is kind of a mix between Batman and Jason Todd's. Where Jason Todd is troubled because he died and he was a troubled kid beforehand. Um, we have David who is, he's really trying to fight the demons inside him with all the terrible things he did. And he did do terrible things, mind you. Uh, so we do see him fighting with the demons inside. And he needs that outlet, that motivation, that, that, that thing that can help him with those demons. And being Batwing is that. And Batman helps him with that. Uh, bad, I can't really say any bad about this either. Batwing was a solid issue, so I will also give this a 5 out of 5. Throwing out some 5s today. Some. Because we're going on to Stormwatch, issue number 0. So Adam 1 returns and he kind of tells uh, Jenny Quantum about all the various different uh, century children throughout the years and how they played part in Stormwatch and how the Demonites played part in Stormwatch. And um, how it all kind of connected in a way. And that's basically the issue. We get to learn about the Century Children. A good, bad, whether or not you should get it. Um, good, I kind of like that Adam uh, Adam 1 came back. Although I don't trust this. I don't, I don't think that's Adam 1. Although it never explicitly said an issue it wasn't. I didn't, I, I, I mean, it's. I think it was bad to remove him because I enjoyed him as a leader. So I'm kind of happy that he's back here. The dialogue was good, and uh, the, the character interactions was nice. Bad. Uh, this does nothing for an origin story. It tells us a bit about where Stormwatch came from, but when I think of Stormwatch, I don't care about the organization itself. I care about the characters. I want to know about what motivates Midnighter and Apollo uh, and the Engineer. I want to know about what created these characters, where they got their powers from, what made them what they are. So I think it failed in an origin story in that. That and there was dolphins with machines. Mechanized dolphin machines. You gotta read it. Um, on a whole, it really wasn't that good of an issue. 1.5 out of 5. I, I really didn't like this issue at all. It, it didn't do what the Zero issue should have done. Um, on to GI Combat. So we get the origin, kind of, of the Unknown Soldier. And also a bit more of the wartime forgot. Now, we kind of knew about the Unknown Soldier beforehand from issue number one of G.I. Combat. But we're getting a little bit more about the backstory of what the Unknown Soldier really means. Because there's more than one Unknown Soldier. There's been an Unknown Soldier throughout the years in every major war and every major conflict. And he, the current Unknown Soldier, is reliving all those pasts and reliving all these different lives. And you start to get the sense of what is real, what is not, what actually happened, what didn't. What is he relating to himself and what has actually gone on with these characters and with these previous unknown soldiers? Um, well, it's not too much of an origin story. It is kind of interesting to get more of a retrospect, not a retrospect, but a, an, um, kind of get more in-depth and detail about where this organization came from, the government with this organization, and the character of the unknown soldier. It gives a little more, more substance to what it means to be that character. Uh, and then the second story is uh, basically the soldier from the wartime that got trapped on the island and trying to figure out what to do and how to get off and come into terms with where he is right now. Good, bad, whether or not you should get it. I felt as though the unknown soldier story was a little too wordy for my liking and I thought the whole reliving the memories, while handled very nicely, uh, was a little silly at times. I'm doing the bads for us, am I? Uh, was a little silly at times, and then in addition to that, I felt as though the wartime forgot didn't do any origin, but you're really not going to do an origin on that because it's a war. Uh, good. Like I said, again, doing good backwards. Uh, good. The wartime forgot story, though, even though it's a continuation, it was a great continuation. Uh, it held up very nicely. It really gave you this sense of loneliness and despair that the character is going through. So I really did enjoy that. Um, on a whole, I'll give this a 2.5 out of 5. Um, I think the second story, The Wartime Forgot, really saved this comic. Because it was kind of it was kind of mediocre up to that point. But yes, uh, 2.5 out of 5. Swamp Thing, issue number 0. So Swamp Thing, issue number 0, we get to learn a little bit more about how the Rot, the Green, and the Red interacted with each other before the events of Swamp Thing and Animal Man. And we get to see Alec Collins transformation into Swamp Thing um, and how he died and came back as Swamp Thing. 
And that's basically the gist of the issue. Good, bad, whether or not you should get it. Uh, the art was really nice in this. And I really did like that it it, it kind of recapped what happened with Alec Holland for people that didn't get to read Swan Thing beforehand. And did I say the dialogue? The dialogue is good. Um, bad. I felt as though they could have spent a little bit more time on Alec Holland because although we get to recap a little bit about who the character is and where he's from and how he became Swamp Thing, we didn't get too much more than that. I mean, me as a comic book reader, whether it's from reading various different materials or doing research or just looking things up, I know Alec Holland dies, gets thrown into the, the, the swamp, becomes Swamp Thing, but it's not really him, then he gets revitalized in Brightest Day. This is stuff I know, but some of the stuff people may not know, so uh, I think it would have been a little bit better if we gave a little bit more detail. Um... But besides that, this was a good e issue. It was a solid issue and a solid backstory. There was one creepy moment where Arcane, the the champion of the rock, killed a baby. It was creepy. But um, yeah, 4 out of 5. It was a decent issue. On to Animal Man issue number 0. So, we basically get Buddy's backstory here. We get to see his connection with his family in this, how he became Animal Man, and how they actually took uh, many of the, how should I say, mythos of Animal Man from previous continuity and used it in here. I think that was touched upon in the series beforehand, but how Animal Man got his powers from aliens, but it wasn't actually aliens. It was a red. Uh, they did it so that he wouldn't go insane. Uh, but that's basically the gist. We see... What conflict, what major cataclysm, or not major, but, well, I guess you could say it's major. What cataclysm forced the Red to manufacture Buddy Baker? What forced them to create the Animal Man? And how Animal Man and his family cope with this? So, on to the good, the bad, and whether or not you should get it. Uh, for an origin story, this does everything you need to know about Animal Man, and it does it beautifully. It was well-paced. Uh, the 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 dialogue the character interaction was beautiful i really do like animal man's family as a supporting cast because they they really are i think a great example of how you can have a wife and a child in a comic book superheroes comic and have it work so um i did like that a lot and I did like taking those Silver Age elements, all that stuff from Animal Man and previous continuity. And although we kind of already knew that the Red was tampering with history, with his history beforehand, we get to see a little bit more of it here, and I did like it a lot. Bad Zilch. Animal Man was a great origin story and a great issue zero. I'm going to give that 5 out of 5. Moving on to the Phantom Stranger issue zero. So this is the start of the Phantom Stranger comic. If you did not read any of the uh, Free Comic Book Day DC Universe issue number one, was it? Um, don't worry because Phantom Stranger's history gets kind of pretty much told here. Well, that section of his, um, his story gets told here. So basically we learn about the Phantom Stranger. We don't know his name. We don't know too much details about his past. It is alluded to that he is a Judas um, that betrayed Jesus because it says, "Forgive me as you would for as he would," and he gets coins uh, connected to his head, uh, not to his neck, uh, to his head, to his neck, um, and he wanders around. And you know, you, you kind of get that sense that he's Judas, but he, he, whether or not that's the case, you can take it as whatever you like. Um, and we get to see him interacting with the DC Universe and his purpose in life and what he is at, why is he doing what he's doing. And in the process, we get the reintroduction to the New 52 of a uh, previous character, the DC Mythos. A character that I felt has been missing for quite some time that I thought was actually going to show up on Earth 2. But I guess it's going to show up in the main DCU. Uh, good, bad, whether or not you should get it. Good. I thought the in reintroduction of the character to the New 52 was very nice. Uh, not only Phantom Stranger, but the other character, and I don't want to reveal who. But uh, the reintroduction of that character was nice, and I'd like to see that character. I thought the purpose of the Phantom Stranger was good. That it's a redemption story, and I like redemption stories. Um, I don't like them 
to be done too, too much, but I do like them from time to time. And one of my favorite TV shows, Angel, is a redemption story. So as a redemption story, it actually works out pretty well. And you see that the Phantom Stranger, we get a little bit more of who the character is. He's not just this being walking around. He has faults to him, too. Bad. I don't know if I consider this a bad, but it's a little hard to believe if he was actually Judas or not. It's never actually Im said, but it's implied. Um, on one hand, it's like, well, wh what if he was? Why would it matter? But at the same time, it just doesn't fit as well as some of the other uh, mythological... No, I don't want to say mythological. I don't want to offend anyone. But some of the other religious-based characters out there, like Wonder Woman. Because Wonder Woman's mythology is a little bit more outrageous and uh, extreme than the Judeo-Christian mythology or the Judeo-Christian belief. Because, actually, if you think about it, Christianity is very uh, docile when it comes down to its mythology and its miracles and stuff like that. Whereas you have something like Zeus throwing thunderbolts around. But, I mean, it, it, you take it as you, you, however you want to take it. And it is what it is. Uh, the only other problem I could say with this is that the, the beginning half, is before he becomes a fan of Stranger, it's a bit of a snooze. It is, it, I think it... It does its purpose, but it's it's not until he actually becomes a Phantom Stranger that it becomes a little better. On a whole, this was a pretty good issue. I'll give this a 4 out of 5. It tempts me enough to pick up issue number 1 and to... I don't know if I'll continue the series, but I am tempted to see where it goes from here. Okay, we have a couple more issues to go through. We have World's Finest Issue 0. I'm tempted to drop World's Finest just because it hasn't been impressing me too much. Um... But I wanted to get issue a zero chance, maybe revitalize that uh, feeling that I get with this comic. Maybe light some fire under my ass and under the comic's ass. Uh, basically, we get the origin of Robin and Supergirl here. We get to see Catwoman from Earth 2. We get to see how Catwoman's life influences Robin. Because see, in Earth 2, it's not Batman that creates Robin. It's actually Catwoman. Uh, and we see how Supergirl is introduced into the... Uh, Earth 2. Well, not introduced, but utilized in the Earth 2. And with that, we get to also see a few unique things about the war with Darkseid. There is a tragedy that happens in this comic. Someone does not live through it. Whether it, it And it's someone's close to Kara and um, to Helena. Or Helena. Um, now, whether it's Catwoman, or whether it's Lois Lane, or whether it's something else, I don't want to reveal. But um, it, it's definitely one of those two contenders. And it is with those characters that creates the bond between these two. Good, bad, one of the nights you get it. Good, I enjoyed the Catwoman in this issue. And I enjoyed her interaction with Bruce. I also enjoyed the art with this. Uh, the flashback art was a lot better. Uh, I think is progressively better than... I don't know if, it's, if George Perez does the art for World's Finest normally, but... I don't know. I like the flashback art. It just feels different. It feels a little bit lighter tone. Uh, I liked the joining of these two working with each other. And also, I liked how we get to learn that Darkseid's invasion or Steppenwolf's invasion of the uh, Earth 2 was progressive. It didn't just happen like that. It happened over time. Bad is... The only real bad I can say about this is I didn't like like at the end they they just met and one of them saves the other one and they comment oh we're going to be best friends forever or we're going to be friends for life or if i actually look it up uh let me see if i can actually find it uh i think we're going to be friends forever i mean it was just a little silly who says that to someone you just met i don't care if you saved their life or not that's weird uh, on a whole, it was an okay issue. I'll give it a 3 out of 5, but mm, it wasn't anything special. And again, I'm I'm probably going to drop World's Finest. Mostly just because I have to save money and pick up other stuff like G.I. Joe. And, you know, also with Marvel Now coming, I'm going to be picking up three titles for that. So something's going to take the hit, and I think it's going to be World's Finest. On to Earth 2, issue number 0. So, with this, we got a bit of information about this character right here. Uh... How they work with, and I don't want to reveal too much on who this really is, uh, but their connection with the Trinity, with Earth 2 on a whole, and how they eventually go from hero to something else. 
um, and how they ultimately affect the war with Darkseid and Steppenwolf. I'll leave it there. Uh, the the I guess I can give you the name of the character, uh, not the true name, but I can give you the character's name in uh, the superhero name, which is, uh, I think it's the eighth or something along the lines. Uh, let me double check. Sorry about this, because I should remember. Yes, Mr. Eight. That is the actual name of the character. But see, I don't want to reveal who the character is actually with the name, because it's going to connect into Earth 2 a little bit further. Let's do the good, the bad, and whether or not you should get it. Good, so with Mr. Eight, we're basically getting a new character for Earth 2, and it is kind of an origin for the character. The thing is, is we... Okay, I'm going to mix the good and the bad together on this, okay? Bear with me. We get to learn about this Mr. Eight and how he's going to be connected to the Earth 2, but at the same time, I really want this to be a focus on Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman of Earth 2. How they became what they were, what motivated them... Before Darkseid's attack. Yes, I understand that they're dead and they're characters that aren't going to be used again. But I still would have liked to learn more about these characters beforehand. Um, while this does a good job at introducing a new character to the Earth 2 family. I think it ultimately failed in me enjoying it. Which is interesting because... Um, James Robinson is one of my favorite writers, and so far he's been hitting it out of the ballpark with all his issues from Earth 2, and also from uh, Shade. But I wasn't feeling this issue on a whole, and I'm going to give it a, like a 2.5 out of 5. Uh, actually, no, I'll give it a 3, uh, because it wasn't a bad issue. I think I just set up my, my hopes a little too high, so I'll give it a 3. Uh, Green Arrow issue number zero. So, uh, I am dropping Green Arrow after this, with the exception of the crossover he has with Hawkman. I have to get that because I, I read Hawkman. But uh, after this, I'm dropping Green Arrow. So, we get a basic origin of Ollie. It, it is the uh, getting trapped on the island kind of origin, needing to survive, all that kind of shindig. Uh, we tie this a little bit more to some super villain actions because, see, he was on an ocean liner having a party and a super villain showed up and something happened that caused Ollie not to be on the ocean liner anymore. Don't want to reveal what it is. But uh, that's the basic origin. We got a little Roy Harper in this too and their relationship. They're like sidekicking hero for like two days. But, um, Good, bad, whether or not you should get it. Good. Uh, I did like that this gave us a, a very traditional but updated um, origin for Ollie. This also gives us Ollie who's faulty, but not too faulty that he's an asshole. I mean, he's an asshole in this, but not like super asshole, cheats on his wife and has adulterous affairs with other people. Um, no, this is, this is Ollie, who's young, brash. He's 17 in this, so apparently by DC 52 standards, he must be like 24, 23, 24. Um, almost the, just a little bit older than Nightwing. Uh, but we, we get to, well, no, that's not true, because this accident, when he was 19, could have happened way back, because we don't know how long he was trapped on the island. I retract that statement. But all we know, he could have been on the island for X amount of years. It's not said. Uh, it was nice also to see Roy Harper and that the fact that we don't forget that he is actually part of the Green Arrow family. Although he hasn't really been in Green Arrow and he briefly mentions is that he's worked with Green Arrow. We must not forget that Roy Harper is actually Green Arrow's partner? Sidekick? I don't know. Bad. Uh, I think Roy Harper was very underutilized. Very underutilized. And I think the beginning was a little bit longer than it needed to be. Trying to show how much he's a playboy and how he needs to get his act together. I think that could have been handled a lot quicker than it was actually done. On a whole, whether or not you should get it. I'll give this a 3 out of 5. It was a decent issue. Um, it did a traditional story for an origin for Green Arrow. It handled it well. It just, I think it could have handled it better. Green Arrow issue number, uh, Green Lantern issue zero. See, so much green going around. Uh, green Lantern issue zero. So we get to learn about the new Green Lantern, whose name is Simon Baz. Uh, in, 
To avoid too much spoilers, this is the basic gist of the issue. The ring goes to Simon Baz, but before the ring gets to him, we learn about who he is, what motivates him, what's his occupation in life, and is he a good person or a bad person. And it really allows us to grow with the character, not grow with the character, but grow to understand the character, to like him or to hate him, depending on how you will view it. Um, because he can either be a good or a bad guy, depending on how the ring works. Because the ring keeps on saying error. Uh, and we also get a little bit of uh, Sinestro and Hal in here in some way, shape, or form. So, Sinestro and Hal will not be forgotten. Good, bad, whether or not you should get it. Good. Um, I like Simon Baz. I think he has an interesting backstory. I think he's obviously a character with faults, but I think he's a character that also uh, can overcome the faults and become something more. Uh, I am interested in him as a Green Lantern. But at the same time, I think we're starting to get too many Green Lanterns, so I think one of them should go... Uh, one of them should no longer be around, or to lose their powers or something. I don't think it should be Hal. Um, you know, I think four is a good, nice, even number for Green Lanterns. So if it came down to it, it probably would have to be Guy or Jon Stewart. Or cancel um, New Guardians and put uh, Kyle on core, but that won't happen. That won't. New Guardians is staying around. Um, honestly, I think there's going to be one too many Green Lanterns. At the end of the story arc and all this stuff that happens with the Third Army, I'm sure they're going to keep Baz on uh, Justice League of America. But, again, um, I, I like him, and I, I'm glad they use, they bring in this character. But at the same time, I'm a little concerned that they're bringing in too many Green Lanterns. We're up to five, not counting Sinestro. Five human, and then not counting Sinestro. So... And not counting Alan Scott either, but that's a team up comic, and that's on another Earth too. So I do like Simon Baz as a character. Um, I don't see why he needs the gun still, but shit happens. Uh, I like the little nod that Sinestro and Hal are to them, where they could be, what could be happening to them. Um, and I also like the foreshadowing that's happening in this issue. Bad. I think we, the only bad is is that we don't actually see Baz as a Green Lantern. We see him get the ring, and that is it. Nothing else of him as a Green Lantern. I mean, I can look back real quickly, but honestly, the, he gets the ring, and that's a bit it. He disappears. So um, I would have liked a little bit more of him being the Green Lantern, flying around, not knowing what to do. Oh, no, I'm going to crash into this billboard. <laughs> kind of thing. Trying to figure out his new powers, but... Uh, that's the only bad I can think. I will give this a 4.5 out of 5. This was a good origin story for a new character in the New 52. I think it was a well done issue. Uh, just felt a little faster than some other issues. And again, I would have actually liked him to don the costume. But a uh, good issue. So we're at the last two issues. And um, first and foremost of those last two issues. So it's, I guess, last and last, 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 last. Uh, Action Comics, issue number zero. So, this is the story of the boy that took Superman's uh, cape. And going into Action Comics, I was thinking, well, didn't we already do Superman's origin in Action Comics with issue 1 up to 12? Kind of. Superman was already on the scene in the beginning of Action Comics, so we can kind of see how he kind of gets a start as Superman. Uh, we see him ordering his shirts. We see him, you know, donning the persona, him going after villains, and the general public getting aware of who Superman is. Kind of, you know, kind of, it is kind of an origin, but it's a, it's a soft origin, for lack of a better term, if that makes sense. Soft origin? Um, it really is kind of an origin mixed with a fun little story, but we get a sense of who Superman is, and we get a sense of what's creating him and what builds him into it. And we also get a, a, a bit of backstory with Jimmy Olsen that was surprisingly refreshing that I didn't see coming that this was going to be very centered on the boy that took Superman's cape. But actually, the boy that took Superman's cape in that small plot point to this issue was very minor. It was very minor. Uh, on a whole, this was actually a really good issue. Action Comics impressed me this time around. I will give this a 4.5 out of 5. It was a solid origin story for Superman without it being too preachy as an origin story. It kind of gives us a little nips and bites here and there about where Superman came from, how he kind of came on the scene with Metropolis, and how the general public came known to know Superman. 
Um, so yeah, 4.5 out of 5. Finally, in, uh, ending it off with uh, Before Watchmen, Silk Spectre, issue number 3 of 4. So we're coming to the end of the series. Basically, is Silk Spectre recovering from her drug-induced, drug-inducing, inducing drugs? She was pretty high. Uh, and the first couple of pages of this issue is her just tripping out, which I really didn't care for at all, but it, it happened. And then eventually she her, fr her boyfriend gets sent to the hospital, and she decides that she's going to go out and take care of business and take out the guy that, that poisoned her boyfriend and such and all that kind of jazz or gave him the drugs and such and all that kind of jazz, and she, she kind of accepts who she is as a person. Uh, this is the turning point for Six Spectre as a character. Uh, in addition to that, her mother calls up a certain friend to help get her daughter back. Who it is? Is it Night Owl or is it someone else? Let's gonna have to read and see. Good, bad, whether or not you should get it. Good. I thought the drug-inducing trippingness was a little too long. Uh, just a little too long. Um... I'm saying this as a good... This is bad. The, uh, I'm running off two hours of sleep. <laughs> um, the drug-inducing trippiness I thought was a little too long. Um, they do a total of one, two, three, four, five issues of her tripping out on drugs. Which I thought was a little too much. And it made me want to skip over some of it. Um, so I didn't like that. But that's probably the biggest problem with this issue, is the, the drug-inducing trippiness. That and the story isn't that interesting. At least the, the fighting villain story. But it's not really about that story. It's about her becoming who she is. Um, I guess the good would be, I like the person that's brought in to bring the uh, Silk Spectre back to her mother. Um, the art was good. And I also liked... Her turning point, her becoming who she is, who her deciding to be fully the Silk Spectre, to understand that yeah, sure, my mom's a bitch, but she only did what she did because she loved me, kind of thing. I kind of went into more about this than I usually do with uh, my Before Watchmen reviews. Um, I'll give this a three out of five. It was okay, it was fun, but again, the the very beginning with those you know five pages of drug inducing trippiness is just too much for me. It was just too, too much. Um, I think it, it, it just took away from the amount of content we could have been in the comic. Uh, one thing before we end this video, and I am going to have to end it soon, is at the end of each issue of the Zero Issues is going to be a little bio of the character representing. Now, Batman obviously has five titles, so uh, I'm assuming each title is going to have a different character. So as you can see, Jim Gordon is in the title. But if you get the Batwing issue, it's going to give you a bio Batwing. If you get the um, Swamp Thing issue, it'll give you a bio Swamp Thing and so on and so forth. So that is the Zero Issue Month uh, first week. We had some hits. We had some misses. And uh, which comic is going to be my favorite? Which is going to be my Andrew Carter pick of the week? Just going to have to wait and see. So I'm going to end this video here. Sorry that the review was a little late today, but... It happens. This is Andrew saying peace out now.